Okay, hi guys. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous channel update video, uh, in that I explain that we are filming today from my fridge. Reason being, my van, which I was trying to film in, was so hot that after a couple of minutes my camera packed up, so I thought, right, I need to take the camera somewhere cool. Here we are. Okay, the Evora is in Stratton Motor Company at the minute having some work done. Now, I developed a list of, I'm going to call them niggles, with the car. Some pretty minor, some not so minor, and they are working through those at the minute. But I promised in the very first video that this was going to be a warts and all look into Lotus ownership, and that it is going to be, and this video is going to be mostly dealing with those warts. So the first issue that I had with the car was the subwoofer. I believed it was not working because when you go into the menu now, so Lotus did a little service bulletin telling you exactly how to set up your stereo and stuff, and in that you go through all these pages of EQ settings and all this kind of stuff to get a really good sound. Then in my car it sounded really, really tinny and not particularly good. So I stuck my head in the back next to the little subwoofer, which is uh, by the rear passenger seat and I really couldn't hear anything coming out of it at all. Stratton have had it for a few days and they come back to me and their official answer is basically, yeah, the subwoofer is working, but um, it's crap. Basically, not their words, they're mine. Their words were, it's very quiet, sir. Also, they tell me that Lotus are no longer bothering to fit them to their cars. It's so good. That's pretty annoying. Um, and not the answer that I wanted to get, obviously. Now, I think I'm going to have to tend to this in future because audio quality in my car is quite important. I'm pretty sure it's probably quite easy to improve upon the sound. You know, there's obviously space and wiring for a subwoofer in my car, which is handy rather than having nothing at all. So... Hopefully we can get that done. It is annoying though because they spent two days pulling the interior apart so that they could get to the sub. The next issue on my list is a creaky seat. Now if you watch the video and you've heard this sort of noise, like tick, 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 bit of metallic tick. Traits, which would all, but you have to remember that a lot of manufacturers... The seat, the driver's seat, when you go into right hand bend, it moves a little bit and there's a real creak from the side. I wasn't sure whether this was a result of my seat having been pulled apart and reassembled when it was painted and not being put back together properly. It looks more like this may just be an issue with my seat. Now there's quite a bit of movement in it and the seat apparently there's some allen bolts and things that go in and they just aren't tight enough. Now Lotus are going to supply some washers for that which hopefully should fix the problem. It's probably the biggest issue I have with the car right now if I'm honest. Uh, particularly annoying because when the seat's making noise I try and cover it up by turning on the stereo which doesn't sound as good as it should and then when the stereo is off I hear this damn seat creaking which it shouldn't so that's been quite frustrating if I'm honest you know having a brand new car with a sort of sports Sparco seat in it and having it creak away like a bugger is not really the sort of thing that I want uh, I need to have confidence in the seat you can feel the seat moving a, a lot more than it should Obviously with that kind of car, the feel you get through the seat is absolutely paramount. So we're working with Lotus at the minute to resolve the issue. The one thing I will say about them is that they are pretty good and they're getting back to us fairly quickly on these things. Now I'm the sort of person that it doesn't bother me too much if I've had a problem, but the way I judge people or companies or whatever is by how they deal with the problem. And so far things are going okay. So the other issue I had is with my gear lever. Now, the gear lever return spring, I guess it's got several springs in there. So when you move it from side to side, it springs itself back to the dead centre position. So in mine, when you move it between first and second, it's fine, it's great, and it springs back to the middle. But when you moved it to between fifth and sixth, it just started staying there. Now, then the other day it sort of started coming back to the middle, but not anywhere near as quickly as it did going to between first and second. So when you're trying to drive, you sometimes started hitting the wrong gear because you put more force on than you're expecting to because you've got to put more force on it going in one direction than the other and it was um, quite annoying. Now apparently that's a spring that's probably snapped or you know gone somewhere it's not meant to go. So uh, they're sorting that out. So that's okay. Next issue I had was that some of the buttons on the dash are not level, which is very OCD, I appreciate, but it's one of the simple little things that, in my opinion, if Lotus wants to be taken seriously, then they really need to sort. 
I mean, let's face it, putting uh, two buttons next to each other and making sure that the text is level shouldn't really be something that you require a master's degree in engineering for. You should put them together and they're either level or they are not. And if they are not, that should not be deemed acceptable. And my sport and race button, the sport button is kind of level and then the race button is, is kind of like that. And it's just frustrating because it shows me a lack of attention to detail. And it's very annoying because it's something that you see all the time, and for the amount of money that I've spent on this car, I don't think that should be a thing. And I don't accept any excuse that Lotus is a small volume British boutique handmade manufacturer. Bollocks. Anyone can put two round buttons level next to each other. So the fact that it was let through is basically just quality control being lazy. Now, annoyingly, this unit is basically one sealed unit, but again, we are talking to the factory and hopefully they are gonna come back to me and sort out a decent replacement. The other problem I had is the engine start light. Other owners have had this problem as well. Basically, when it's dark, the engine start light is illuminated. It's illuminated all the time. And it's crazy bright. It doesn't dim with the rest of the dash, and it doesn't go off when you start the engine. And it sits in such a place that you have your hands on the steering wheel, and you kind of cover the light with your hand. So most of the time it's not too big a problem, but then you turn, oh, I can see it. Oh, I can see it again. And it distracts you. you know, your eye catches something and it distracts you when you're driving at night, which is not helpful. It also reflects off the windscreen. Also not helpful. So apparently there is no fix for this. But the thing that's really annoying is that with the Elise and the Exige, which also have an engine start button, it turns off when the engine is started. So why in the Evora it doesn't is anybody's guess. So those are basically the issues that I have. The car will have been at Stratton for a total of four days when I collect it tomorrow, and all the problems still won't be resolved, so I have to then bring it back in again. So I'm pretty annoyed at having to lose the car for such a long period of time when it's so new. And a few of these issues, to be honest, really should have been picked up before the car even came to me, either at the factory during their quality control or by JCT during their PDI. I mean, maybe I'm being a little bit picky about some of this stuff, but I don't think that it, any of it could, should be, excuse me, you tell me, do you think I'm being overly picky? If you do, you're wrong. So, the car's coming back to me. The, the good news is, and really, it might sound like an overly negative post uh, to make, but the good news is that basically, the car is still amazing. The car is mega. Everyone loves it. And I love it more than most. It's brilliant. I would much, much, much rather have a car with awesome sound, superb handling and great looks, and then have to fiddle with getting some buttons and lights right, than have a car with immaculately laid out buttons and stuff, and no personality. Which is the case with cars from some of their rivals, particularly the German ones. So I'm still completely happy with the car in the sort of big way. So. I will keep you up to date with this situation. Hopefully in the next video, I'll be back in the car. Some of these issues will be resolved, some of them will not, and I'll keep you up to date with everything that's happening. Don't let any of this put you off buying a 400. Maybe I've just been really unlucky because mine is a pretty early one still. You know, they've only been making them since late last year. Mine was probably made in February, March of this year. So they are making improvements. The guys that own 400s, we've compared, and we can see every single car, they make little changes. You know, the factory is always taking on board feedback. Yet things are being integrated. The lovely thing about making cars in a hand-built way is that, you know, if they want to change something small, they don't have to completely restart all their tooling. It's not like a huge discussion. It's just a case of, well, as it's hand-built process, they can in implement changes really, really quick. So that's great. So overall, love my car. It's got some niggles, it's a hand-built car, so they can happen, but they will be fixed. And that's it for today. I will see you guys soon. And yeah, thanks for watching as always. If you like it, subscribe. There'll be more soon. Bye.